It's an early November sunrise on the prairie in northern Oklahoma. Time to work the bison. Cowboys here at the Tall Grass Prairie Preserve are rounding up the 600 bison calves in this herd, which belongs to the nonprofit Nature Conservancy, to vaccinate them, brand them, tag them with a microchip, and yank their tail hairs. Hold on there. Pull their tails? It's interesting when you're pulling tail hairs, the calves especially, you know, none of them like us touching them anyway, but the calves, this is probably an outer body UFO sort of experience for them. Here they are, they're separated from their moms for the first time. They get caught in the steel, steel contraption that gives them this hug. We're touching them. We reach in there, we grab their tails, and what you're trying to do is grab those hair follicles or the hairs right near the base, and you yank straight back with a pair of pliers. So you just boink, trying to yank them all out at once if, it, if you can get a good bite. Actually, it's not the tail hairs the preservationists are after. It's the follicles on the root end of those hairs. The follicles contain enough genetic material to do DNA testing on the bison calves. The goal? To root out imposters. A hundred years ago, when bison were on the verge of extinction, ranchers crossbred some of the wild animals with domestic cattle. But generations later, many, perhaps most, North American bison still carry remnants of that cattle DNA. And that may be having a subtle effect on these mighty creatures. If a bison has cattle mitochondrial DNA, 100% of its cells has the wrong battery, essentially, within it. It has a cattle battery in a, in a bison cell. And it's been shown that that is a physiological downer for bison. Uh, they don't grow as well, uh, they're probably not as ecologically fit. That's a, a fairly easy test uh, that you can conduct, so that's why we're yanking tail hairs. To make sure the strongest bison survive, the prairie preserve is collecting DNA so they can figure out which animals to cull from the herd. It's not a job for the faint of heart. They're just a wild animal, basically, you know, so the, the more confined they get, the, the more agitated they get, so you just never know what the next what the next animal is going to bring. It may be calm, it may be going ballistic. And they'll typically jump a little bit, kind of like, whoa, you know, what's going on back there? And, and a lot of times the little guys, uh, they use that opportunity to, uh, to void their bowels, would be a tactical way to put it, I guess. And uh, you got to watch out, you have to get a hold of it, you have to control that tail fairly quickly because if they start to poop, uh, they'll sling that around with their tail and uh, you better have your mouth shut. Once the DNA is tested and analyzed, the Nature Conservancy will sell off any bison with traces of bovine genetics. Those animals will likely become stakes. The rest will continue to roam the prairie, grazing and rolling and fighting and mating, doing what their ancestors did for centuries across the vast grasslands of the Great Plains. They're happy to get out, I know that. For the Wall Street Journal, this is Stephanie Simon in Pawhuska, Oklahoma.